White House fears pause in fighting will let journalists report what's been happening in Gaza. Israel and Hamas have reportedly agreed to a four-day ceasefire which will entail the release of 50 hostages held by Hamas in exchange for 150 hostages held by Israeli forces. In an article titled, Biden Admin Officials See Proof Their Strategy is Working in Hostage Deal, Politico describes the deal as the administration's biggest diplomatic victory of the conflict and reports that White House officials are calling it a vindication of Biden's decision-making, which is an entirely inappropriate level of verbal fellatio for an achievement as minimal as not murdering children for a few days. Tucked away many paragraphs into this report is a sentence which is getting a lot of attention on social media today, saying that according to Politico's sources, there has been some resistance to the pause in fighting within the administration due to fears that it will allow journalists into Gaza to report on the devastation Israel has inflicted upon the enclave. And there was some concern in the administration about an unintended consequence of the pause, that it would allow journalists broader access to Gaza and the opportunity to further illuminate the devastation there and turn public opinion on Israel, Politico reports. In other words, the White House is worried that a brief pause in the Israeli massacre of civilians in Gaza will allow journalists to report the truth about the Israeli massacre of civilians in Gaza, because it will hurt the information interests of the U.S. and Israel. They are worried that the public will become more aware of facts and truth. Needless to say, if you're standing on the right side of history, you're not typically worried about journalists reporting true facts about current events and thereby damaging public support for your agendas. But that is the side that the U.S. and Israel have always stood on, which is why the U.S. Empire is currently imprisoning Julian Assange for doing good journalism on U.S. war crimes, and why Israel has a decades-long history of threatening and targeting journalists. During Israel's bombing campaign in Gaza in 2021, the IDF reportedly targeted more than 20 Palestinian press, in press institutions in the enclave, as well as the tower hosting international outlets AP and Al Jazeera. During this current onslaught, Israel has been killing dozens of Palestinian journalists, sometimes by actively bombing their homes where they live with their families. The IDF's campaign to wipe out inconvenient news reporters has resulted in the Committee to Protect Journalists calling this the deadliest conflict on record for journalists anywhere, ever. Both the U.S. and Israel have been attacking the press in this way because their governments understand that whoever controls the narrative controls the world. They understand that while power is controlling what happens, ultimate power is controlling what people think about what happens. Human consciousness is dominated by mental narratives, so if you can control society's dominant narratives, you can control the humans. This is why the powerful have been able to remain in power in our civilization, because they understand this, while we the public generally do not. That's why they bombard us with non-stop mass media propaganda. That's why they work to censor the internet. That's why Julian Assange languishes in prison. That's why Israel routinely murders journalists. And that's why the White House is afraid of what will happen if worldwide news reporters are able to get their cameras into Gaza.